Um, I just want, I want us real fast to just, uh, Eva, if you could pull up those lyrics from the first song from Foundation. I just want to sing it together. And it's the rain came, wind blew. Um, and I know we haven't really sang this song before, but I just want us to like not just sing those lyrics together right now, but like really see what it's saying. Like close your eyes, whatever you need to do. I know you might not know the lyrics, but we're just going to sing it real fast. Rain came, wind blew, my house was built on you. I'm safe with you, I'm gonna make it through. One more time. Rain came, <laughs> blue, my house was built on you. I'm safe with you, I'm gonna make it through. God. I just want to thank you for the opportunity to come into this place and worship with you. In times when, you know, uh, we come down from a mountain and we have an amazing week and we come back to the reality of like, we have changed, but our circumstances might not have changed. The things back home might not have changed, but God, you go with us. Rain came, wind blew, my house was built on you. I'm safe, I'm safe with you, Father. Help, that, help us to realize that that's our reality today. It doesn't matter what's happened in a day or two since we've come back. It doesn't matter what's happened in the year that we've just been coming to church, God. You're with us, and, and you, you make that promise with us, and we thank you for that. And we love you and pray this in your name. Amen. If you guys would, open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. Um, when we were at camp this past week, uh, I gave a, a little seminar on Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. We're going to be looking at Exodus 3, verse 11 and 12. Um, and if you know anything about this Bible passage, it's Moses and the burning bush. Um, a lot of us have heard about the burning bush and, you know, God talked to, to Moses in the burning bush. But, like, we tend to, like, look over the beginning and the end of that passage. Um, and I think those are the parts that are the most important. When, we, when I was at camp, I talked about how Moses didn't know who, um, he didn't know who God was yet. And he took his sheep, he went during his workday to the mountain of God to just, like, on a last whim, he just killed somebody. He just left all of his family. He has nobody with him. And he left everything and he said, I have nothing right now. I'm going to go to the mountain of God. And if this God is real enough, he'll meet me there. And we see that God does meet him there with the burning bush. And I want to read through chapter 3. Um, and the reason I, I, I bring up uh, just that, that passage um, is because, like, dude, I talked to uh, I talked to our youth a little bit about um, just a friend that I had um, that I had been praying for for a long time. And his name was uh, his name was Marcos, and I've been praying for him a lot. And God did something crazy in that whole situation. I've been praying, and and, and the thing that God showed me was like I don't even need to tell people at my work about Jesus. I just have to live it out. If I live out what it looks like to, to have Jesus in my life, people will just be like, I want some of that. And, dude, I didn't have to tell my friend, hey, come to church. He just said, I'm coming because whatever you've got, I'm coming. And, um, and I'm just encouraging our youth and encouraging you guys as well. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't know who you're trying to win for Christ today. I don't know who's your coin that you're trying to just, like, get to church, but I just want to say one of the biggest testimonies that you guys can have is to live it out. It is so easy to just do the everyday thing, but like, I'm telling you, taking some time to like, when you're at work, to maybe just not cuss as much. Uh, when you're at work, uh, just taking some time to encourage somebody. Taking some time to just not complain as much. 
like the factor of whether or not somebody that you love comes to know Jesus or doesn't. Um, and so that's what we talked a little bit about camp, but I don't even want to focus on in this passage about the burning bush, because uh, we all know about the burning bush. I want to talk about Moses goes up on this mountain, and we're going to read it right now. Uh, it's Moses 3, verse 11. Oh, sorry, Moses 3, right? Yeah, Exodus 3, thank you. <laughs> hey, hey. Exodus 3, verse 11. And I just want to tell you guys at this point, I mean, if you don't know who Moses is, I know sometimes we get Moses and Noah mixed up. He was not the one who built the ark. He was the one that parted the Red Sea. Uh, some of you laugh because you're like, yeah, I've done that a few times. Yeah, I've done it too. Um, but Moses, he's the one who parted the Red Sea. He's the one who went up to Mount Sinai and, and God gave him the Ten Commandments. He's the one that, whose face was glowing so brightly that like, they, he had to cover it when he went back to his people. That's Moses. And we read in chapter 3, verse 11, this is what it says. It says, but Moses said to God, who am I to go to Pharaoh and to bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Who am I? <laughs> you know, I, um, I've been asking myself this question a lot. Because, like, you know, I'm a... <laughs> Like, we had an amazing experience at camp. Like, we had, I mean, we had 51 students go to camp with us this past week. I mean, praise God, yeah. But, like, I'm sitting here, and I'm just wondering, like, who am I? Like, God, why would you even, like, entrust these kids with somebody like me? Like, who am I? And I know I'm not the only one in here who's, who asks that question, like, you know, I want to bring my, you know, like, you're, you're at home, and I want to bring my kids to Christ. I want to bring my friends to Christ. But who am I? How could I do that? Like, who am I? And Moses, this guy who we see does amazing things because of Christ, he's asking this question, who am I? And I don't want, uh, you know, I was, uh, we were at camp. And uh, it got to about day three or day four or something like that. And, um, you know, when you get to about day four, you start uh, getting really exhausted. Um, I'd like to believe that I'm still young. and You know, I try to keep up, but these guys are kind of nuts. Uh, it, any opportunity they got to go up to the front and start doing some friggin' rave in the front, they would take any opportunity. And there was only so many times I could do that. Um... <laughs> But about day four, and I thought it was so funny, I woke up and I was just like, I'm weak. Like, I don't, I don't have, like, like, I literally was like, I just don't have it. And, like, even some of our youth came up to me and was like, yo, are you good? Like, you just seem like you're not as uh, joyful as you were the past couple days. And I'm like, so it's showing, man. Like, it's showing. And, um... I go into uh, I go into our leader cabin because I'm like maybe I'll get an energy bar or something and I'm like I I'm like my heart's heavy at this point I'm like I just don't know what to do with this exhaustion and this lack of spirit in me and uh, Mackenzie the director of the camp comes up and I remember her saying earlier in the week she's like hey if you need prayer for anything stop me and let's pray and so I was like. I think God put Mackenzie in this moment for me, because so I, I I pulled her aside and said, "Hey, you got some time," and um, she was like, "Yeah," and I was like, "Can we pray?" And she's like, "Yeah." So we just walk over to this, these chairs that were set up or something, and on and I just start weeping, man. I've never had a moment like that where I've been so weak that I just start breaking down, dude. Like I'm like I can't stop crying. And uh, I'm just telling her, like, man, I'm weak. And she's like, you're not weak. You're just spiritually drained, dude. You've been pouring out. And uh, you need to take some time. And so she prays for me, and I'm feeling weak. And she's like, don't, don't go talk to kids for the next 30 minutes. She's like, go, go, go to your room and take a nap or go take a shower. I'm like, all right. 
And so I do that, and then I go to dinner, and I'm like, man, still just feeling like, you know, all right, I'm here. I took a nap. I'm good. All right. And we go into the worship service that night. And I know some of our youth saw it, like, or some of the leaders, too. I, we get up to the worship time, and I'm, like, I'm, like, moving around. I've got this energy. I'm, like, I'm, like, I don't, I don't know where this energy came from, but I'm just here to worship. And I'm, like, I'm just going to go as hard as I can because I've got it. And, I, and we're singing, and I realize rain came, wind blew, my, or my house was built on you, um, and it was just like, I realized, this isn't my energy anymore. Like, Mackenzie prayed for me. I asked God, like, I need, I'm drained, I'm done, I don't have anything left. And he filled me up. And I had enough energy for the rest of the day to just go absolutely nuts. But we read this passage. Moses says, said to God, who am I to go to Pharaoh and to bring the Israelites out of Egypt. And God doesn't leave him there. God immediately says, I will be with you. And this will show you that I'm the one who sent you. After you bring the people out of Egypt, you will come back here and worship God on this mountain. And I, I just, man, like, when I'm feeling weak, when you're feeling weak, God is with you. I, you know, and I, uh, there's not many times, you know, like, I mean, obviously I can go through life as much as I can, and I believe this. Um, but God made it very real for me that, like, he's close, uh, and he's close to you. And I don't, you know, obviously for our youth, and if in the past couple days, I imagine life has been, uh, you know, it's not been exactly what it's been like at camp. We, they probably came home and realized they've changed, but the world hasn't changed. Their situation hasn't changed. And I know for a lot of us in here, there's been times in our lives where maybe we came up to this altar and we said, like, I want to lay it all down. I want my life to change. And maybe you did mean it. Like, maybe you got baptized and you're like, I'm brand new. Like, Everything in me has changed. And then a few days later, you're like, but who am I? Who am I that, like, I can actually change? And I just want to let you know, like, through all of that, God is with you. And he's just waiting for you to just realize that, like, you don't have the power. You don't have the strength. But he gives you the power and the strength. Um and so I just, I could get up here and talk a whole bunch about this friggin' passage as much as I want to, but like, um, I dude, I wanted you guys to hear from our youth um, and just hear about like, what, what did their experience on that mountain look like? Like, what are they bringing home? Like, what are they changing and bringing change into their new uh, environment? So like, if, you, if I ask you guys to come give a testimony, I want to invite you guys up here. Um, I don't know everybody who's here, but yeah, if you guys, yes, you know who you are. Um, all right. Well, uh, I, I, I don't know what the Lord wants to do, but I just basically said, hey, you guys got a minute or two. Go ahead and. Say what you want to say, so here we go, you know. Uh, hi. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. Um, well. <laughs> okay. Just hold it close to your mouth. Okay. Uh, I, uh, my name is Noah. This is the first time I've been here. Um, <laughs> Uh, the reason I went to camp is because there's some guys in the crowd that invited me, and I just, it sounded like it would be fun, but it ended up being a lot more than just fun. <laughs> um, it was awesome, actually, <laughs> making me tear up a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, every night was just, God was just pouring into us, and um, 
it was awesome. I ended up getting baptized. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, what JR was talking about, just like being tired, um, they had these points and you could earn more points by reading Bible verses. And every time I would open the Bible and I would start reading them and memorizing them, it felt like he was pouring more energy into me that I could use for like the games and everything. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was awesome, a life-changing experience. <laughs> Um, my name is Alejandro, uh, and I've been here before, but in this camp experience, being, being a first-time camper, along with my brothers, I didn't, I didn't really know what to expect, but since from the first day, I just, I saw that when there's like so many people, so much youth that just love God and are just together and love each other and worship, there's, you can realize how much God is with you. And you know, God is always with you, even in the, in the world right we are right now, but if you just take that time to focus, enjoy that company together, you can realize how much more God loves you and is always there by your side. And uh, one thing that stuck out to me during praise is when our, sermon pastor his name's Jeff Smith he he's really awesome I love that dude and one thing that spoke out to me was he was reading a verse from Matthew chapter 7 and it says that if you put if you hear God's word and you put it into practice you are like the wise man who built his house on the rock and when the rains come down and the wind blows you cannot fall down because God is there and with you and so I just we, me and my two other brothers, Fabian and Sergio, got baptized, and we just, <laughs> and, you know, I just want to, I just got that experience, and I want to build that relationship with God and Jesus to build, and he, and Jesus is the bedrock, and he, with him, nothing ever falls, so I, my experience with camp was Super awesome, with the games and everything, and I just love everybody who came. Hi, my name is Noah Lani, and I was a first year camper here. And, oh, okay. I'm just gonna like read what I wrote down, and it says, I never thought of God as a God, but when I went to camp, I was proven very wrong. After going to camp and youth group, I was significantly impacted, and I will never forget what happened, and I will always f be grateful for God. He helped me through times I thought would never, what I would never go through, and I never, like, after I got baptized, I don't, I didn't know how to explain it to all the people who was like, asking me about it and talking to me and I've just I felt reborn and I've <laughs> I feel really at peace and when I got home I thought everything was gonna be magically better and different <laughs> but it wasn't but these past few days have been very impacting and made me very grateful for everything that I have. <laughs> uh, my name's Gianna and I was also a first year camper. And um, when I got baptized this year, I felt <laughs> I think God, he told me, to, like, through the worship that you needed to, like, I needed to get baptized. Um, I don't really know. <laughs> 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 um, I don't want to cry. <laughs> um, so during the worship, 
um, <laughs> Jeff, he said something like, I want you guys to come up here and, and surrender. And that then I felt like a really, really sharp pain in my shoulder. And so I went up and immediately it was gone. And so then the day after that, he said something else. I can't remember when, and I felt it again. And I, I was like, this is God telling me I need to get baptized. So I did. Yes. Um, and I just think camp was really fun. I loved it. <laughs> Hello, my name's RJ. It was, this was us. Awesome. This was also my first time at camp. I, it was just a really big experience from one of the first days that I, when we got there, we had this thing called Tog Time, where we would go pick a spot in the forest and just talk with God and just read about him. It felt amazing to just connect with him. The worship was amazing to feel, to hear some songs that I've never heard before. I was able to uh, tell some people about them, and they liked the songs, too. It was just a lot of fun. I didn't get baptized, but I did the recommitment, where basically we wrote a... S <laughs> where basically we wrote a sin on a rock and that we wanted to throw out of ourselves, and we threw it into the bottom of the lake. It was... Can we give it up to these guys? Dude. You guys are good. Yeah, I, uh, dude, I, I, I honestly, like, I feel like every single one of our youth could probably get up here and say something that God did in their lives at camp. It was like, I mean, that was just a little sneak peek, dude. Like, I don't, I don't know how to, ex how to explain it, but. One conversation I, I, I kept having a lot um, was just, like, a lot of us know that, like, camp is this amazing experience. And when we come home, things change, dude. Like, we go back to our regular day lives, and it's like, oh, okay, so I just got to go back into it. Um, and one thing I was just encouraging our youth with is, like, don't go back by yourself, dude. Like, dude, there's, like, a real reason that God has, like, put e us into this room in church here today. Like, I'm, I can, I, I watched this meme the other day, and it was, like, how come nobody's talking about Jesus having 12 good friends in his 30s? Um, I'm, like, 27, and I'm feeling that. I'm, like, I got, like, two good friends. Um... But what I'm saying is, like, dude, like, our friggin' cabin, like, yo, I had a lot of the seniors, and this is their last year at camp. This is the last time they get an opportunity to be in this, like, Christ-like environment. So what are we going to do about it, dude? Like, let's, like, so we're like, hey, let's start a small group with just, like, seniors and, like, <laughs> like college students, right? But, like, on top of that, like, we have other youth, dude, like, if you're wondering, like, why you don't have friends, I just want to let you know there's people, like, look here, guys. Like, you have something in common. Y'all want to show up uh, to this high school on a Sunday. So, um, but all that to say, like, dude, uh, <laughs> who was it? Who, who said this? Um, oh, I asked, so Alejandro, his brother, his name's Sergio. I don't know if he's here right now. He's here. But uh, I asked him, so we do this thing where we clean up the tables, like each team cleans up a table at the end of, like, the meal. Um, and so I asked him, I was like, hey, I got to go to the leader meeting. Can you clean up my table? And, uh, you know, he's like, yeah, let, I'll do it. 10,000 points, I'll do it. So, and so I go to the bathroom to, like, wash up, and he comes in there, and I'm like, hey, man, thank you again for doing that. And I don't think he realized it, but maybe he did. And he goes, hey, man, yeah, of course I'd do that. We're the church. Like, that's, <laughs> yo, like, 
We're the church. You know, like, I don't think a lot of us in this room really understand what that means. And this kid who's like, what, going into eighth grade says, like, we're the church. And I just want to, like, encourage, like, don't just come to church on a Sunday and think, it's just for me. You know, like, church is just for me. I'm going to take what I need and I'm going to leave. We're the church, all right? We work with each other. We grow with each other. The body can't function without one piece from another. And so I just encourage you, like, dude, live in the reality that God is with you and that we are the church. And I can tell you life will get so much easier when you realize that it's not all on you. Uh, you don't have to take all of it. And then on top of that, you've got people around you who you can work through with it. Um, God has been so faithful f with our youth, but definitely in our church. And why not take that opportunity? Um, I'm going to pray for us, and we're going to worship. And, um, yeah, God, uh, you know, it's funny. <laughs> Lord, I didn't know what the heck you wanted to talk about this morning. <laughs> I wrote a bunch of stuff down, and I'm thankful that, God, you put something together. <laughs> but, Lord, you know, just as I'm speaking, like, I'm realizing, like, in every moment, you have been there. You have been faithful. And you're not going to stop there. It's not just like, oh, you're, you're with me in this moment. You're with me at this time. You're with us all the freaking time, dude. Like, in those moments when we feel like we're not good enough, when we, in those moments when we're like, man, I really screwed up, in those moments when, like, we feel alone, in those moments when it just feels like, who am I? God, like, how do you do it, man? You meet us there every single freaking time. And I thank you. And God, I just, I just want to pray a special blessing over our youth. Thank you for what you did. Thank you for what you're going to do. And God, I pray that we go back to the mountain next year and give you the praise for what you did this year. Father, we love you. We're thankful. And we ask that you go with us today. Continue to just give us people who are going to speak life into us. Help us to get rid of the people who are speaking death into us. And to just, God, like live in your body. Live in the body of Christ. We are the church. Help us figure out what that means, Lord. We love you and pray this in your name. Amen.